Hey, what's the largest problem you're facing right now with your junk removal business? Are you still researching the business and you're looking, hey, where do I get started? Are you not getting enough jobs? Are you slam busy and you're having to turn away work, but you don't know how to take it to the next level, how to hire crews and get more trucks? Are you worried that the crews you have aren't doing a great job or maybe even stealing from you? These are all problems that every junk removal business owner is gonna face as they grow. These are problems I've had and I've learned how to solve. The solutions can be found in the complete junk removal business training series. Grow your business, change your life with the JRA Complete Training Series. Removal Authority on Let's Talk Junk, where we come in every single Tuesday at 12 noon Eastern. So appreciate you guys joining us today. We are going to be covering uh, pricing today, and this is going to be for people that are currently in business. This is for people that are looking to get in business, because we're not only co covering setting your pricing, we're also covering on when to raise up your prices. Throughout today's show, which is probably going to last somewhere around 45 minutes to an hour, feel free to leave any comments that you have. If you've got any questions at all pertaining to your junk removal business, or especially pricing, then make sure you ask them. One thing I will be asking you today to do today, if you'd like, is to provide your zip code as well as what your disposal fees are in your area because later in this segment we will actually run some pricing suggestions for, uh, for, for you, for your company. So feel, feel free to put your zip code as well as disposal fees in the comments section. All right, so on junk removal pricing, there are several different options and people that are brand new probably wonder, you know, how do these, how do these companies charge? And there are companies out there that charge using all, using all kinds of a variety of different methods. The most common is using it by volume, but you've also got people say, well, why not charge by time? Why not charge by weight? Or maybe just, uh, just straight up space, so only space space last volume. Then you've got the option of space slash volume plus labor. And then the fifth thing, which we're hardly going to cover at all, is just something that's random. But a lot of people do this. A lot of people go completely random. They just make up their pricing as they go along. They wind up confusing themselves and confusing the customers. So the very first one I'm going to talk about on the reason you do not want to go just based on time is this. With time, oftentimes you're going to be doing jobs that don't take up a lot of space. They don't take up a lot of weight, but they might take up a ton of time. And the, so it, it makes it harder to explain to customers that you're char for what you're charging is based on time when there's just very little that's getting removed. And the fact is when you go off and you take it off and you dispose of that stuff, listen, it's, it's not weighing, it doesn't weigh a whole lot. So your expenses are very, very low. It doesn't take up much space, so you're gonna be able to combine it with another job, yet you wanna charge a higher hourly rate for this. So it's just hard to sell customers on. The other thing is, I don't know if you guys have ever actually thought about the hourly rate of junk removal in terms of just being on site, but oftentimes you might go off and you might do a full load of junk removal, it might be $600. And you do that $600 job, you might do that $600 job in 30 minutes or an hour or something like that. And the same customer that signed off on it at $600, if you told them that essentially, if you're gonna do this job in 30 minutes, it's gonna be basically $1,200 per hour, uh, they think you're insane because like doctors don't even make that. So that's, what, what they're not seeing though is the drive time to, to there, the time spent maintaining the truck, the insurance cost and all of the overhead. You're simply not going to be able to explain that to a customer. When you charge based on just time, all they're looking at is a labor rate. They're not looking at all the other overhead and expenses that go into it. That same customer that you charged $600 or $1,200 per hour essentially for that full load would be perfectly happy if it was equated to just a volume-based rate. The So one thing people talk about some is, well, moving companies, a lot of times moving companies do it by time 
not all moving companies, but a lot of moving companies do. The difference is, is that a moving company, one, they're not having to pay a disposal rate. They're also not having to, uh, they're, they're hand unloading. So they've got a significant amount of time into it. They're, they're spending time wrapping items and packing the truck tight and all that kind of stuff. So it makes a little bit more sense for a moving company to charge based on time. A junk removal company, it simply does not. So the next thing is weight. If you evaluate it by weight, well, the first thing is, is all right, well, how are you going to weigh it? And there are, is a company out there that exists that provide, that actually has scales on their trucks. And I cannot remember the name of this company. I think it's out of Canada, but they will actually, um, you've got scales on the truck that tells you how much the truck weighs uh, when it's empty. And then once you load everything in there, it, it creates the difference. And it char they charge basically a flat rate for per pound. And that's sort of a differentiator for them, but the, the issue is um, a lot of times stuff can take a lot of time, but not again, not weigh very much. So what, what's occurring is you're, uh, uh, you're spending all this time putting, putting stuff in there. Like think of like, we've done jobs before, we've literally done jobs before where it was just a bunch of clothes. And you're having to bag all this clothes up, take it out to the truck it's getting weighed and all that kind of stuff and then you're just going to charge based on weight but those I, that stuff doesn't really weigh a whole lot so you're not really getting kind of properly compensated not to mention you've got to install scales on your truck the scales cost a good a decent amount of money up front then you have to maintain them when they break you've got to fix them and what happens throughout the day sometime during th uh, throughout the day they actually quit working malfunctioning how are you going to complete the rest of your day and the only other way around that which some dumpster companies do is they allot you a certain amount of weight and anything over, they'll hit your credit card again and kind of make up the difference. That's a little bit of an issue. And then the other issue is in terms of giving uh, customers a firm price up front, it's very, very difficult. Yes, you are going to get good, just like when you're quoting by volume. You will get good at looking at a bunch of stuff and saying, you know what, this is going to be 1,000 pounds or 1,500 pounds or 2,000 pounds. When you look at a bunch of stuff, you'll say this is a half load, full load. You'll get to the point you can do that if you're quoting based on weight but you're still always gonna be off a little bit. It's never gonna be exactly right. It's easier to quote based on space and volume than it is based on, uh, based on weight. The third option is just based on space. And the nice thing is, is all right, now, now we're getting most of the way there. That's how all your major franchises do it. Your got junks, your junk kings, college hunks, junk luggers. If you go up and down the list, that's how they do it. So the reason they've chosen that route is it's easy to explain to customers. It's, it's a lot easier to explain to customers exactly how it works. Once you get on site, you've got a very firm estimate. And the uh, other part of it is, 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 is it's generally more profitable. It's gonna be more profitable than charging just based on time. It's gonna be more profitable generally than charging just based on weight. So you as a company, the, co the customer is happier because they can get a firm price up front. It's easier for them to understand. You as a company are happier because actually you're going to bring in more money by, this, by using the space method. There's one other thing that's missing though, and I've seen tons of companies that have made this mistake, is they get in their mind this, all, this, this thing that's all labor included. And a lot of companies have changed their wording, but several years ago what you always used to hear is, uh, is like Got Junk would say, we charge a volume-based rate, all labor is included. So the problem is when all labor is included is you're, you struggle to charge more and estimate more if it's going to be a longer job. So there has to be a cap on that amount of time. And what we do is 30 minutes per every one quarter load. So 30 minutes is included per every one quarter load. So that's two hours for a full load. If your full load is gonna take longer than two hours, then we charge a labor rate of, what we do is $50 an hour per person. Fifty an hour per person, prorated. So if it takes them 30 minutes, we're going to charge them, we're not going to charge them that full hour, you know, it'd be $25, it'd be $25 per person if it took them a half hour. We add that on top of the volume rate. The other thing that's missing on a straight space, the other thing that's missing on a straight space is surcharges. So, what are common surcharges? Well, electronics,
Jesse, do we have any, uh, see if we can get some spray so we can spray this thing off here. Uh, electronics, mattresses. Thank you. What are some other ones? Tires. And there's, there's going to be handfuls of other, uh, other items where you can charge surcharges. That, that's on item removals. Why might you charge extra for these? The reason is, is because oftentimes you're going to pay to get rid of electronics, possibly even mattresses. A lot of places charge per mattress. You're probably going to pay to get rid of tires. So you need to make sure you pass that cost on. But it's not just passing the cost on. You're going to pass the cost on plus some uh, to, a, to allow for the additional time. Because every single time you get rid of these items, they're not going to the landfill. And unless you have a transfer station or a landfill that's got recycling facilities right beside it, if you're lucky enough to have that, you're going to have to take these either back to your warehouse for sorting or you're going to have to take them to a different facility and they're going to have to be dropped off and there's an additional cost for that. Surcharges are an excellent way to get additional income out of jobs. So let's say even if you're not charged for electronics or mattresses or tires, if you're lucky enough that you've got free disposal facilities for those items, then at that point, you still want to charge these surcharges though because it's taking, you're having to take them to an additional facility. It's a great way to kind of earn additional income and it's, it's becoming more and more common, uh, more and more commonplace. The other area to potentially do uh, additional surcharges is on bagging. And I'll be getting to your questions in just a minute, guys. I know we've got a couple that have come in. Uh, bagging, not only, not only for the time that it takes to bag, but also for the trash bag. So oftentimes we charge $20 or excuse me, $25 per one quarter load of bagging. Now, important designation here, this does not uh, include the time. All this is is just to compensate us for trash bags. And we use pretty expensive, thick, like 3.2 uh, millimeter trash bags. So we use really thick trash bags. So this pays for the trash bags probably plus a little bit. We make a little bit of money on that. And we still are charging the extra for the time if the bagging forces us to go over. We got a question there, Nate? Yes, we do. All right, so we got a question from Adrian. Uh, I'm trying to get the ball rolling, but my wife is just full of lackluster to really help. How can I get anything done with her not 100% invested at helping me? Man, you got to get her on board. Um, there's, if you've got, I mean, that's a great way to have relationship issues and business issues. If somebody's always questioning you kind of in the background, you got to have somebody that's supporting you through and through. You got to find a way to let her know that you're, this is your dream and that you're not a complete person and, and you're going to always be disappointed if you don't go after it. And y'all can say, you know, listen, let me devote two years to this thing. Give me two years to see if I can make this work in two years or give me a year. Give me full support for some period of time. Because what she's afraid of is she's afraid that this is just going to be something that's going to last forever. It's going to be a forever problem. So you sit there and you say, by X period of time, we'll make a decision and to see if this is going to work out or not. Because if you attack a junk removal business hard for two years, you're going to have a good business. If you do it the right way, if you stay on it, if you're constantly learning, constantly improving, you'll make a great business. So see if you can get her to 100% support you over while you try this thing out for the next two years. Anything else there, Nate? So that's, a, hey, that's an excellent question. That's not one we get very often, but it, it is an issue that uh, has probably sunk more businesses um, than we'll ever know because a lot of businesses, a lot of great businesses, a lot of great products, great services have simply never started because somebody was fearful. Either it was the person that invented it saying, hey, this might not work out, or it's the person that's behind them. It could be a spouse that's saying this isn't going to work out. So you, you got to get, you got to surround yourself with, with supporting people that support you. That doesn't mean, hey, you might want some good feedback from people and saying, well, this might be a bad idea because of this, this, this. But if once you've made your decision, they got to be 100% behind you. All right, so we're talking about pricing here. And we've come up with, uh, by far and away, the very best method to price is based on space plus extra labor plus any surcharges that you might have. So one thing I want to really, really drive home here before we kind of get onto this next portion. Price, average, your average job income is just about the most important number in your junk removal business. Average job income 
And the other one that's very important, we're not going to get a ton of detail here, but it's important to mention because average job income has something to do with it, is your acquisition, customer acquisition cost. There are your best customers, your best t customers typically cost more money to acquire. So if this average job is low, if this average job is low, then you might not be able to use some of those advertising methods unless you just have a huge cash reserve that you can just bleed through. So keep in mind, once you get a customer in, if you do a great job, they're gonna come back and use you again, they're gonna refer you, they're gonna leave an online review. That's the three R's. The, so making money, being very profitable in the first customer doesn't really matter, but you don't wanna lose money. Because if you lose money, the, the more you grow, the more business you get, the more money you're gonna lose. And that's a recipe to go out of business. So customer acquisition cost. Raise up your average job income enough that you can, that you can afford to spend $100, $120, maybe $140 to actually acquire a customer because you're going to get a lot of customers for $60 or $50. And then if you can also get those $140 customers, now you're really starting to build up a multiple truck uh, operation. By the way, guys, um, we get uh, junk removal companies that send us in hats all the time. So uh, we're going to start displaying one up here. This is Funky's Junk Removal. Uh, I love hats. So if anybody wants to send us a hat of your company, I will make sure to get it displayed up here. I actually wear them fairly often too. So uh, that's Murray uh, out of Atlanta, Funky's Junk Removal, appreciate that. All right, so we're, uh, we're getting back to pricing. And the next thing is, all right, now that you've come in and you've quoted this job up front, you've let the customer know the price and they've okayed it. Now you've gone and you've loaded everything up. You've loaded it all up. So what's the next thing? So the next thing is obviously to tidy up the area and all like that. But after you're done tidying up the area, one of the most important things for you to do is the final walkthrough. And this is important for pricing. When you do this final walkthrough, you're looking, you're, you're, you're scanning around, you're kinda, you, you've got your eyes all over the place just trying to make sure that, hey, is there anything else this customer might not have seen that they want to go. So this is your upsell chance, guys. The final walkthrough is your upsell. Now this is hard, hard, hard once you have employees, team members, to get them to do this. Uh, you're going to have to incentivize them in some way to be able to do that. And we'll talk. We'll, we'll do an episode on, incentiv uh, on how to incentivize team members probably in the next uh, next several weeks. But this is your chance at upsell. So when you're looking around, you're walking around and say, hey, I, I did notice you had this stuff over here. There's, there's this pile of garbage or there's this older item here. I, I just want to make sure you didn't want that gone. And you just pose a question as just verifying that they didn't tell you that they wanted something gone that you might have missed. That's what you're looking at. You're trying to be helpful. You're trying to ensure there's not something that you're going to go 30 minutes down the road or hour down the road that they're going to miss. That's how you present it to them. And you will get probably about one out of every seven customers are going to say, you know what? I do need that gone. The way we normally approach stuff that's added is if it does not go up one price point, so we just say uh, we, we limit additional items to one price point. If it does not go up by more than one price point, then we are not going to charge an additional amount. So in that case, we're just trying, we're, we're just building up points for the customer. You know, we're just further impressing the customer when we do that. If it goes up by at least one price point, then uh, we say, let's say the person's the customer's name is Jesse. We say, yeah, Jesse would be happy to take that for you. Uh, that will raise you up from a half load to five eighths load. It's just $30 more. We'd be happy to get that picked up for you. Does that sound good? Think about what you just did there. You like literally, there's almost no additional expense to take that extra $30. All right, if it takes you 10 minutes of time, maybe you have a couple dollars in labor and maybe it weighs a little bit, so maybe there's 50 cents or a dollar in disposal fees, yet you got $30 more. If you do that on five jobs a week, that's $150 more, you know, uh, a week. Go down, you know, times 52. You're talking some significant money that's straight to the bottom line just by doing that upsell technique on that final walkthrough. What kind of question we got there? All right, Brandon asks, in your opinion, what is a strong average ticket cost for 12 months? 
So it's going to vary on the year, oh, not the year, on where you were located so and what your disposal fees are. By the way, guys, uh, if you missed the very start of this show, place your, dis uh, your zip code your, and your disposal fees in the comments section, and I'm going to give some pricing suggestions. And also, if you want to give me the size of your truck, is it a 15-yard, 18-yard, 20-yard, 12-yard, give me that information right there. And before we wrap, I'm going to do a little bit of a... Uh, uh, pricing suggestions and everything. Hey Jesse, if you could slip out of here also, it'd be great if we can put another, maybe put another hat up here on the second part of the episode. Send Matt a message. Um, so uh, the question, average ticket. The most recent data I had was, uh, I believe College Hunks was getting somewhere, College Hunks and Got Junk were getting somewhere around $400 average throughout the uh, country. If you can't get out, Jesse, don't worry about it. I'm a big race fan. We had the we had the, we had the Daytona 500 last week. They used to have uh, they used to have the drivers always put on hats after they'd won the race. They call it the hat dance. We need a we need a bunch of hats that I can start uh, you know putting on or display. All right, so um, $400 average is what college hunks, hauling junk, and got junk are getting throughout the country. Look at that. We got Mad Matt Mary bringing some in here. All right, so uh, then the average non-franchise, get this, 280. The average non-franchise was getting about 280. $120 difference right there. That makes, that makes up for, more than makes up for those royalties, because you mean, you figure right there, you know, they're getting, they're sending $60 back to corporate. But they're still getting, there's even with that, they're getting twice the amount of profit simply because they're better at quoting and they've built up a great reputation. So part of this is you have to have a really professional reputation to be able to charge more. Your guys have to be trained on quoting. You know, our Jogger Bible training series would do excellent on getting them trained up on quoting. We got that employee section that does amazing. So where would I like to see you? You're probably, you're going to struggle to get to 400 for a while. I'd love to see you about 300 in most areas. Again, if you have $200 uh, or 150 or $200 a ton disposal fees, you're going to be higher than this. But in most areas of the country that have $50, $60, maybe $70 disposal fees, I want to see you in the 300 to 330 job average. I'll put a star around that. If you can get, uh, y'all don't make fun of my stars, I know they're crappy. Uh, if you can get a, uh, if, if, if y'all can get to that 300 to 330 job average, you can do Google Ads, you can do SEO, you can afford to spend money to acquire customers. 280, you're barely breaking even on a lot of those, and in some markets, you're not going to be able to do Google Ads at, at 280. It's going to be a little edgy. So getting that up to closer to 300 is going to be, uh, that's going to be the ticket. Nate, we got any other questions? Daddy, yes. Oh, no questions. All right. Um, do we have any uh, any zip codes or anything like that for pricing? Yeah. We do. Okay. So give me just a second. We'll get to that in just one minute. We'll have, to, have to get some paper towels here next next time, guys. So let's throw another hat up here. Who's the next hat? Oh, let's see. Oh, we got Mr. Mitch. We got Junk Masters Minnesota right here. He sent me a hat. We're gonna put this thing on display. All right, so here's the deal. How do you set pricing? Setting pricing, the, the two things that you mainly need to know are your disposal fees. And one of the most important, important, important things is there a minimum And then obviously your truck size. Now, a few other things will play into it. Like if you're in New York City and you're having to go and to do jobs in Manhattan, that you know, 25 story skyscraper, and it takes you however long to ride up an elevator, um, that's gonna slow you down. And if you have to pay for parking and if the traffic's really bad, then you're gonna need to account for more than this. But in the average city in America, you need to know your disposal fees and your minimum. If you're in LA and New York City, you're gonna to have to add a lot of extra for, for traffic. Atlanta's pretty bad on traffic. But the main thing is you need to know your disposal fee. Is there a minimum on the disposal fee? 
what's your truck size. So let's get a couple examples right here. Uh, Nate, uh, what's a zip code that we've got? Yeah, of course. Uh, one is uh, 91739. Uh, he's using 15 tar, 15 Nine, yards. 91739? Mm-hmm. 15 yard truck, disposal and fees, I, he got those? Yep, and I believe he's charging $62 per ton. All right, so that he's going to be charged sixty dollars per ton of the landfill. Okay, and did he say? All right, I'm going to assume there's not a minimum. Um, who, who is this, by the way? This is a uh, Lemus Properties. Lemus Properties. All right. So Lemus Properties. If there is a minimum at your landfill, let me know that too, because that's going to affect it. So that's the other thing I forgot to tell guys. If there's a minimum, make sure to put that. Let's find out where nine one seven three nine is. Nine one seven three nine in San Bernardino, uh, California. So that $62 a ton, you're probably on a 15 yard truck. You're, uh, hopefully you can get somewhere around 575 to 600 for a full load. Here's what we're gonna do. This is, right now, Junk King is about the only one that has still got a pricing estimator online. So we like using them as a little bit of a basis because we can somewhat understand the um, local market. So slide on over here, launch pricing estimator. We're showing up here. If you look up here, guys, 91739, 91739. Ah, they're switching it up on me a little. Hopefully it still works. Ah, look at me, they're gonna trip me up here. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see, we'll say it's uh, Ronaldo. C, email address is Ronaldo at Ronaldo.com. Come on, come on, give me my estimator. All right, here we go. Literally, I, I did this like a week ago and it, they hadn't, hadn't changed it. it uh, go figure, as soon as I do on the live show, they switch it up on me. All right, so if we slide up here to six pickup truckloads, what I say, I'd like to get at least uh, 575, 600. Hey, look at this, got junks getting 608 to 648. So you're gonna be able to get closer to um, real close to that $600 based on that. So here's what we're gonna do. 1-800-GOT-JUNK is, not got junk, uh, Junk King uses an 18 cubic yard truck. So 648, that's the full load, 648. Here's what I know about Junk King. They gave a range, 608 to 648 is 648 for a full load. All right. 648 divided by 18. What we got there? 648 divided by 18. It's $36 per cubic yard. Now here's the deal. J Junk King is always, always, always about the cheapest in any market. So 36 a cubic yard in that market with your disposal fees is too low. So we're gonna jack up that price a little. But let's take that $36, we're gonna multiply it by 15. That's 540. So what we're actually gonna do is get you up closer to about 615. So I would start at a 615 full load. So we'll start at a 615 full load and now we're gonna figure out the rest of our price points based off of that 615 full load. What I need is one of those smart boards where I can just erase it with my hands. Have you, have you guys seen the price of those things though? They're insane. All right, so 615 on the full load. So our full load rate is at 615. Now, I'm not gonna do all the different price points, but we'll show three quarter, one half, uh, one quarter, and a minimum. All right, so if we're at 615 on a full load, the three quarter load as a general rule is gonna be somewhere around 85% of your full load. So 0.85 times 615, 522, let's, let's, put it at, uh, let's put it at 535. So again, this is not an exact science. And if there's one thing that I want to make sure you understand, this is just gotta be in the ballpark, guys in the ballpark, it is not an exact science. $5 here, $10 here is not gonna make a difference in the grand scheme of things. Half load, uh, I believe is about 65%, 0.65 times 615, 
we got 400. Four, is that right? 0.65, yeah, that's gonna be right. Times 615, $400. That's uh, on a 615 full load. Let's put that at like four. Let's, get, let's squeeze a little extra out of it. Let's put 405. Quarter load as a general rule is somewhere around 40%. Now I will say, once you get to the smaller price points, if you have a higher full load rate, so if you're in an area where the disposal fees are a bit more, $62 a ton is not bad disposal fees uh, at all. Um, it's, it's, it's easing up a little bit, but it, it's, it's not bad yet. You, I wouldn't consider bad until you get to about $70, and at that point you have to be a little bit higher. So one quarter load, 40% times 615. It's coming in at 246. Um, that's, that, that's probably reasonable in that area. You might actually bump that down to say about 235. And the only reason for that is, is now that you start stepping down to the sixth load and the quarter load, you need to have reasonable increments in between them. You don't want your eighth load being like $200 as a general rule. So on the minimum, this depends on your business strategy. So junk doctor's minimum is 125. We are busy enough. That's our junk removal company in North Carolina. We're busy enough. We did just shy of $3 million last year. That's three locations. Um, we've been in business. This is our 10th year in business. So we get, we get business all the time, and we've determined that we don't want to do jobs for less than 125 simply because there's not much profit in them. When you guys are first getting started, though, if you do a job at break even, that customer, the three R's, your repeat business, your referral business, your review, uh, them leaving online reviews, that can kick in, and that customer that's a minimum charge now might one day be a full load or multiple load job later. So I'm gonna say your minimum in your area should be anywhere from 95 to 125. And out of curiosity, let's see what Junk King is on their minimum. Look at that, Junk King in your area is at 118 to 138. So they might even be going for 138 as their, uh, as their minimum charge. So the minimum is the one that uh, is a little bit up, to, up for debate. But uh, anyway, that's, uh, let's see, we had uh, Lemus Properties out of San Bernardino. Here's your pricing recommendations. Let's do one more of these things and then uh, just pick one random one there, Nate. Yeah, we have uh, Ship Shape Hauling in Port Townsend, uh, WA. Uh, and the zip code is 98368, and he is charging uh, $168 a ton. 98, oh, we got a phone one, 168 a ton, 98368. It's, mm -hmm. what's the name of the company? Uh, Ship Shape Hauling. Ship Shape Hauling, all right. Okay, Ship Shape Hauling. And let's see, where are we located at here? Nine eight, I think you told me that, but nine eight three six eight zip code. All right, looks like we are in Washington State, Jefferson County, Washington. Cool. All right, excellent. So nine eight three six eight ship shape hauling. I'm going to stick your name up here, man. I appreciate you commenting. That's awesome. Hey, if you guys are liking this video. Uh, give us that thumbs up, and, and also make sure you subscribe to our channel. And as you notice, we're putting out a lot more stuff now, putting out a lot of content, having a lot of fun. I've even got some truck stuff coming for y'all. Now, I'm, I'm not on it. You're not, you're not that lucky. But um, I, we've got some truck stuff coming. You're going to get to meet some of the guys from Junk Doctors. we got some characters that work for us. So we're going to kind of make kind of start sticking them out on YouTube and letting you see what a busy junk removal operation is. we got uh, we got Nate. Matt's... Uh, Mad Matt Mary, he's not running the show today. He's getting ready to go to Disney World next week. So we've got Nate actually running the show. We're going to get Nate out on the junk removal truck and see how he does and allow him to kind of capture a lot of this content. I don't even know if he knew that. He's, he's smiling and giving me the thumbs up back there. All right, ship shape hauling. All right, let's see here. We're at 62. Oh, we're not. We are at, how, what's his tonnage rate? It was high. It was high. What was it? 168. 168. 168 a ton. Did he say there was a minimum or did he not, did he not say? He did not, but... Uh, one second. And do we have a truck? Uh, do we have yes, a truck we have a 12 yard trailer. 12 yard trailer. No minimum, no minimum was recorded. Uh, $40 minimum. That's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. $40 minimum. 168. This is going to test me out here. So, um, before I even check 
uh, Junk King, 168 a ton on a 12 yarder. So I always base my stuff off of a 15 yarder. You are gonna have to be, just going off the top of my head, you're gonna need to probably at least be about a $700 uh, to seven, maybe 725 full load on a 15 yard, maybe even 750. Let's do it a 750 divided by 15, that's 50 times 12. Mm, comes up to $600 on the full load, but I think it's gonna be a little higher than that because you got a smaller, you got a smaller trailer. All right, so let's rock and roll here. Hopefully a Junk King is located here. If not, we're gonna have to get a little creative. Nine, eight, three, six, eight. Nine, eight, three, six, eight. Sorry, we don't serve your, service your area yet. So here's what I would normally do is, the next thing we can do is Junk Removal, Port Townsend, Washington. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Jefferson County Solid Race, Murray's Disposal Co. <clears throat> They're ship shape. There you are right here. Let's check out your website. There we go. All right. Ship shape hauling right here. Let's see. What's your population in this area? I don't want to go too crazy on this. Some of these things take a bit more time if you're in areas that aren't as well established. Pop I need population. Uh, let's do metro population. Pretty small area here. Let's, tr let's look at uh, the next thing I want to look at is average income. Fairly low average, uh, average household income. So ideally at this rate, you're getting somewhere with your trailer, it's going to be somewhere around $600 for a full load. What's he getting right now, do you say? He's probably nowhere close to that. For the full size? Yeah, full load. Uh, he did not say no. Yeah, this area is a little tough. Uh, you got a little lower income. You got high, you got high disposal fees. On an ideal world for 12 yards, you're going to be getting somewhere around 600. I mean, it'd be great if you can get 650. I just don't know if you're going to be able to. So let's, let's, let's run this at 600 full 600. Now listen, um, if you act before you implement this, if you're, if you're a lot lower than this, we really would need more evaluation to determine for ship shape hauling if, if he could actually should charge this amount. But let's go ahead and run through the numbers anyway, 600. And then for your three quarter load, it's going to be, uh, 85%. Jesse what's 85% of 600. Let's see. Well, 10% would be 60. 5% would be uh, be 30, it'd be $90 less than 600, so it'd be 510, is that right? So 510, three quarter load. All right, plug in 65% um, uh, of one half load. I'm sorry, I didn't realize you're actually doing, you're uh, running the show over there. Uh, so I've got it here, 65% of 600, about 390. And I see a half load of that 600, yeah. We're gonna need to start working our way down there because you got a smaller trailer. So probably somewhere around 350 actually here. One quarter load. And uh, one quarter is about 40% as a general rule, but it's gonna be a little different because you got a smaller vehicle here. One quarter load. Probably going to be close to about 200 and your minimum would be that same thing somewhere around well you, you're, you're expensive enough with that $40 minimum that tonnage you're probably going to want to get at least $99 to as much as 140 for a minimum. Now listen I would not necessarily unless these are fairly close to what you already have I wouldn't necessarily implement these because I would like to have done more research on your market but you can see uh, kind of what we're going after there. These smaller trucks the smaller your truck, the more money per yard that you're able to charge. So keep that in mind. Pricing is not an even ratio or whatever. So obviously, if we're charging 65% of your full load at a half load, you can see that. It is, as you add more stuff, it gets cheaper. The cost per cubic yard goes down. What well, we got in the way of questions here, Nate? We have a question from George Loco. Can you give your thoughts on roll-offs versus dump trucks? 
Great question there, George. Um, where's George Aldo, by the way? What's the name of his company? Let's give him a shout out. Uh, um, he has not said. So, George, the both businesses are great. Roll off, roll off first chuck removal. I like them both. I love them both. Surprisingly, I do not like one more than the other. However, your junk removal companies and your dump trucks, so I'm saying versus junk removal, I'm, I'm calling junk removal straight up uh, um, dump truck. The main thing is, uh, until you're ready to actually rent dumpsters, I do not see a good reason to have a roll off truck. They are more expensive when you buy them. They're also higher upkeep, not only from maintenance, but insurance. Um, and also a roll off, you know, a lot, a lot of times people are getting these hook lift trucks. So you're gonna be, a good junk removal dump truck you can get for the low 60s, you're gonna be probably 90,000 minimum, maybe 120, or depends on what size you go. Hell, you can get roll off trucks for $250,000. Um, so, uh, th th that's the main, you know, the main thing. So what are the advantages to a roll-off? Well, the nice thing about a roll-off is if you go and you do a really heavy job, you can actually drop that bin onto the ground, which is safer for your guys. We actually, what we do to, what we can do to offset that is a winch on a junk removal truck. So like on the trucks we sell, the very front wall at the top, we've reinforced that wall with, uh, and then we install a winch and that winch will actually pull up really heavy items in the truck. Most of the time, almost all the time, very seldom you ever use this, but when you do use it, it's very, very nice. A lot of times your guys, even if you gave them the option to drop that bin on the ground, they're still not gonna do it oftentimes. And then you increase the likelihood of potentially damaging driveways. Um, so it's not, it takes it some additional time. Again, there's some maintenance involved there. Uh, just for the most part, the cost difference as well as the upkeep difference, which is part of the cost, and just the simplicity. The, the dump trucks, for the most part, very, very seldom fail. There's just a lot less strain on them. I mean, the tr like trucks we build and several other people build, like the components are so overdone for a junk removal truck that the hoist is so just overbuilt. Um, it's just made for a lot more weight. The, the strain on junk removal trucks is really not a lot because on the average, you know, it's what are your thousand pounds that you're hauling on the average for the most part. So um, if you look at the overall strain, it's just not that great. Where Did he ever say uh, what the name of his company was? Unfortunately, no. Nothing? Okay. No, no problem. problem. Well, I appreciate you, uh, appreciate you asking the question. All right. We, any final questions? Do we have any more? Yes, we do have a right. question so from... Let, let, let's get to it. Let's get to it in just a minute then. I, I wanna, we'll wrap up the show with questions. The last thing that I want to cover here that I've got kind of on my agenda is when to raise prices. All right, just much like when I set those two companies, Ship Shape, Hauling, and I didn't get the other one. When we set, when we set the pricing on them, Guys, it's not an exact science, it's a guideline. A lot of you, I was the same way. If you go back years back, I remember the first time we raised prices. The reason we raised it, by the way, is I was no longer doing jobs by myself. I used to do jobs by myself, I'd get somebody to help me out. Well, in about 2011, early 2012, I did a job for Michael Jordan. Now it's not the Michael Jordan, it was a, it was a guy's name, Mike, Michael Jordan in Durham, North Carolina. I did a job for him. We were hauling some uh, fencing. And he told me, hey, it's just a little bit of stuff. I'll give you a hand loading it or whatever like that. It's, it's not gonna take up a whole lot of space. So I showed up with my trailer and all, and I get here and there's like three trailer loads of fencing. And there, it's the full panels. He hasn't broken it down and there's nails that are exposed on one end. And his help was like non-existent. I think he helped me throw a piece of wood or something into the trailer and that was about it. And the rest was up to me. Well, on the, one of the last pieces I was loading, something bound up and it came down, it slammed into my leg and, and the nail ripped about a six inch gash into my leg uh, about halfway up my thigh, which I have a nice, awesome scar. It looks like I had a big knife fight or something that's about this long right there. But um, after that, I said, you know what? I'm never doing jobs again by myself because the customers, one, the customers shouldn't have to help me. That's bad business anyway, liability. And um, two, uh, they generally don't know what they're talking about on pricing estimates and all and how much stuff they have. So. 
every single job we're going to do moving forward, if at all possible, was going to be with two people. So we had to raise prices in order to accommodate that. And I remember dragging our feet for weeks on raising pricing, determined, trying to call and got junk and re doing all this research and trying to figure out what we should charge. And we, we, I think we wound up raising our prices by like $20 or something like that on average. And it got really slow after that. And just about the point, after about three or four days of it being slow, I almost raised the price, almost lowered the prices back. And all of a sudden the phone started ringing and it rang again and again and again and again and again. Business started rolling in and we, you know, just kept on rolling. We never lowered prices and we just made more money. Because remember, it goes straight to the bottom line. Or in this case, it allowed me to get a second person, making jobs easier, making jobs go by faster, making them safer. So for the next couple of years, we'd always hesitate. We're like, you know, when should we raise prices? How much? It would be a, this huge ordeal. And finally, somewhere around 2015 or 16, I walked into the office one morning and uh, this, this isn't in our big office that we just got here for JRA. This was at the smaller um, field office, which still exists for junk doctors where we used to work out of. And I walked in there in the morning, it was like 7.30 in the morning, it was cold as hell outside, I remember that. And I uh, walked in, I told Christian, I said, Christian, let's raise prices today. No research whatsoever. He's like, oh, okay, you know, how much? I said, I don't know, what do you think? I said, let's, let's go up $30 on the full load, let's go up $15 on everything else, except for the minimum. He said, all right, sounds good. We changed those prices and we've never looked back. Every single year, twi or twice a year, twice a year from, uh, for, since then, we have raised prices. It's not this huge scientific deal. We get in the ballpark, we raise them up, and things keep rolling. So what you have to remember, the average, the average, the average, the average junk removal customer has absolutely no way to truly visualize or understand what you're charging, what your competitor's charging. If you answer that phone, if you've got a professional website, if your guys show up on time in uniform looking just great and being super professional and nice people and they do the job right and they don't damage property, if you do that, if you do that, pricing is almost irrelevant. Now you can't be just, got junk can't be 700 and you be 1500, but pricing is almost irrelevant if you build value. Pricing for the right customers is less important than value. So build the value, raise your prices. Now, how do you, the, the best way to let people know that you're a valuable service is getting lots of awesome reviews. Get those reviews, get those reviews, ask for them at the end of the job, have them leave them on Google, Facebook, Home Advisor, Yelp, whatever you're using, whatever is important in your area. That's how you build up your reputation. That's how you're perceived as having high value. That's when pricing becomes relevant. Last questions. Let's roll. All right, we got two questions. First one is from Brian from Free Space Junk Removal. Hey, Lee, my truck is 14.4 cubic yards. What rate would you recommend? Uh, his zip code is 85705. I believe that's Tucson, Arizona. And he is charged... 32 to 42 dollars per ton. 85785. 85785, yep. And uh, one more time on the business name. That is the, Free Space Junk Removal. Free, free Space Junk Removal. Mm -hmm. And 32 to 42 dollars per ton. All right. We're just going to base it off 42. Uh, I'm sorry, Nate. Did he say the size of the truck? Uh, Yes, uh, it was 14.4 cubic yards. All right, I'm going to round that up to 15. 15 cubic yards. All right, so here's what's awesome. Raleigh, North Carolina, our disposal fees are $42 a ton. So this one's easy. Um, all right, junk doctors, we've, we are as busy as got junk in Raleigh, if not busier. Uh, we have tons of reviews. So part of this is going to depend on how long you've been in business, how many reviews you have as to what you might be able to charge. Listen, man, if I'm you, I'm trying to go for $595 full load. And unfortunately, I'm a little, let's see, $595. I'm not even exactly sure what we're charging to junk doctors anymore. I think we're about $600 for a full load, but about $595, your three quarter load, about $475, that seems about right. Wait a second here. Point. 85 times 595. 505, that sounds better. Okay. Three quarter. 505. We'll put that at uh let's put that at 515. Half load. That's 
Ask him what his prices are if he's still there. Or if you're, yeah, well, I'm asking you probably, uh, there we go. Uh, we got uh, free space, free space. If you're still listening, what are, you, what are your prices? Let's compare them at once I'm done here. Let, let us know your actual prices. 0.65 times 595. Now we're at 386. 1.385. One quarter load. That's 40%. 0 0.40 times 595. Comes up at 238. 230. Let's put that at 240. Yeah, I say 245. Again, it's not a science. And our minimum load. Let's, let's rock and roll somewhere in between $89 to $125. Did he happen to respond with his prices? That's too bad. So, hey, but I appreciate your comment, man. Uh, free space junk removal out of Tucson. It was out of Tucson, wasn't it? Tucson, I think. Let's see, 85785 zip code. Let's pull up his website here before we wrap up here. Free space junk removal. Did he respond? Yes, he says he is charging at 445, uh, 595 pending. It's center of town to just outside of town, and if it's up to an hour to get there. So he's 445 now. Did I hear that right? Yeah, 445 now. Yeah, you're gonna want to inch this up for sure. Now, now here's the other part of this though. If you're not, this is for customers like coming from Google Ads, coming from SEO, these are higher value customers. If you're getting cheaper customers off of Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace and all, you might not be able to get this. So that, that's actually an extremely important designation. Um, in that case, what we did, because we were in the same boat years ago, is we had a lower tier price for customers that came from Craigslist. You can use uh, some number swapping services for that. For customers from Craigslist and a few of these others, and we had a higher tier price for customers that came from the more expensive advertising services that were normally willing to pay more. You need to get your prices up some though if you ever want to be able to do your Google, your S Google Ads, SEO competitively. Uh, I got time, we got time for probably one more question. All right, we got a question from Juan. What's up, Lee? I had a guy ask me about concrete. Uh, how much do I know to load in the back? Um, should I deny these jobs or should I, or what should the charge be? Yeah, and um, hey guys, also when you leave, uh, when you leave comments, be great. If you, put, if you include your business name, we might pull up your website, kind of give you a shout out on here. I always like knowing the businesses that we're talking to. So concrete removal, I'm gonna give you the lowdown on concrete removal. Concrete creep removal, depending on where you are, and this is great, you know, I sit here and plan out this show and we never actually mentioned heavy, heavy loads. Man, this board looks terrible, but that's all right. Y'all put up with it. All right, so um, concrete, concrete, concrete. Concrete is obviously extremely heavy. So here's the deal. If you're hauling it in your NPRs, you can go about one to 1.5 feet in height across all of your bed loads. This is what we call bed load pricing. If you are rocking and rolling in an NRR or an FE180, we got our Fuso guys, repping the Fuso guys right here. If you guys are rocking in the NRR or the FE-180, y'all gonna be able to go to about two, to probably not two and a half, we'll say about two and a half, but probably not two to 2.5 feet on your bed load. So you're, you, you are gonna be able to haul more. Now, how do you charge for this? Generally what we charge, it's the exact, it, it's, it's based on uh, minimum bed load, Actually, we don't even do, it's minimum slash one quarter. We start at one quarter on bed load pricing. We then go to one quarter load, one half, three quarter. I am all, I'm all kind of messing up here. Minimum and one quarter is the exact same. We have minimum, one quarter, one half, and full. That, and it's the exact same price points as if we were filling the truck all the way up. That's how we do it. Concrete, you should still do concrete jobs, but you charge per bed load. If it's, if you're gonna have to wheelbarrow, if you guys are gonna have to wheelbarrow stuff out to your truck and all, you're gonna charge an additional labor rate uh, based on the two hour, based two hour limitation or the 30 minute per quarter load. So if you have a half bed load, so that's half of the bed, one foot or maybe up to one and a half feet in depth, then you've got an hour worth of labor. If it's gonna take you longer than an hour, you're gonna prorate that at $100 an hour is how you're gonna charge that out. Concrete jobs are cool. You know, the thing to look at on concrete 
is um, uh, how much is it going to cost you to get rid of it. So here's the deal. Uh, a lot of places, concrete removal is actually free. If you find a good concrete recycler, then it'll actually be free. So um, that, that's all on the disposal fees. So, I mean, obviously, these can be profitable jobs. Well, here's one other thing. I want to mention one other thing on concrete. Breaking up concrete is not that hard. So jack hammering, hammering it, even if you had to get a concrete saw and make a cut, uh, it's not that difficult. So if you determine that you want to actually break it up, you can. As a general rule, you're going to do about a 450 minimum. This is concrete. Concrete. I hope this is showing up. This is getting kind of, this board's getting a little wet. 450 minimum. It's going to be somewhere between $5 to $9 per square foot. Five to nine per square foot if you're actually going to be jackhammering it and, and hauling it off. Now, if you have a lot of it, you're going to want to rent a bobcat with a, with a jackhammer attachment. All right, guys. Uh, I'm, if we had any other questions, I'm sorry I didn't get to them on this, uh, this show. We'll, we might be able to respond to them in the comments section after or later. Uh, really appreciate everybody watching. Hey, if you're looking to get in business, JRA has a business package that is the um, amazing franchise alternative. It's a fraction of the cost. Same great training. Includes our amazing brand new 155 video training series that's going to teach you everything there is to know about your junk removal business. And just uh, make sure you check that out. So, every single Tuesday, 12 noon Eastern Time, we talk junk on Let's Talk Junk. Again, I'm Lee Godbold with Junk Removal Authority, where we help junk removal business owners make more money and live a better life. Hey, junk removal business owners, I want to show you something right now. I want you to check out just one of the over 150 courses as part of our junk removal training series. There have been many new junk removal people who have said they would remove a basketball goal at a customer's home for far too little money. If a basketball goal has a pole that goes into the ground, there will be concrete. One of the issues is you don't know how much. Sometimes the person who put in the goal was a bit overzealous on how much concrete they used. So you're gonna dig into this, you're gonna get the pole, and there might be like 500 pounds of concrete on the bottom. It's just very, very heavy. There are two methods of doing this job, and which way you go is dependent on the customer. The easiest and most cost-effective removal method is to simply take your sawzall and cut the pole off as close to the ground as possible. When you make your first cut, make sure to do so a few feet off the ground. The reason for this is the bottom of the pole is going to be filled with concrete and you're going to ruin a reciprocating blade if you hit it. Once the first cut has been made, you can look down the pole to see how close you can get to the ground. Once you cut it off as close to the ground as possible, load the truck and the job's finished. Removing a goal using this method will generally be done on a volume-based rate as you would normally charge. Many customers are not going to like this. They're going to want the pole and the concrete gone. Again, safety is the name of the game here. The best way to remove a basketball goal is to use a skid steer. If you do not own a skid steer, you can actually go and rent one for the job. The time and the energy that you're going to save by using a skid steer and the level of professionalism you're going to show is going to be well worth it. The first thing to do is to use your sawzall and make a cut most of the way through the pole. Then maintain control of the top half while bending it over and breaking it off. Go ahead and load that into the truck with your skid steer. Next, it's time to pinch the bottom part of the pole between the teeth and the bucket and then lift it up out of the ground. Make sure you are carefully watching the driveway if the pole butts up right next to it. You don't want any pressure at all in the driveway or you could bust a chunk out of the driveway. That's very expensive to fix. As a general rule, when pulling the pole out of the hole, do so with the skid steer parallel to the driveway. Don't be behind it or in front of it. Parallel is where you want to be. When quoting a removal that includes the concrete ball, you're going to charge the volume rate plus an equipment rate for the skid steer. Find out what the rental rate for a half day or a day is, 
what the taxes are, and what the delivery or pickup fee is unless you can deliver it and pick it up on your own. As a general rule, you'll mark up the rental rate by about $50 or so depending on the time it takes to coordinate everything. One thing you might be thinking is why can I not just use a sledgehammer or just rent a jackhammer? Both of these methods will work, but you're going to work long and you're going to work hard by doing it. For just a little bit more money, you can do the job quickly and professionally without wearing yourself out. We've done removal of these basketball goals using all three methods. By far and away, the easiest thing to do is the skid steer. Want to learn more about how this series can make you more money and improve your life? All you got to do is click.